Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Let us continue with our tafsir of Surah Al Imran. Bihawli Allahi wa quwwati. And we are on ayah number 78. Qala Allahu ta'ala. Wa inna minhum la fariqan yalwuna alsinatahum bil kitab. Li tahsabuhu min al kitabi wa ma huwa min al kitab. Wa yakuluna huwa min indillah wa ma huwa min indillah. وَيَقُولُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ So he's still on the topic of the Yahud. And he says that a fariq, a group of them, so not all of them, but a group of them, يَلْوُونَ أَلْسِنَتَهُمْ So firstly, the verb lawa يَلْوِي لَيَّن means to twist. And it can also mean to bend something, or to make something crooked. And it can also mean to distort something. The latter would probably be a better translation. They distort the book with their tongues. Alsina, the plural of lisan. So what does this mean? Distorting the book with their tongues? It means tahrif. So either this means changing the words completely, or it could mean changing the apparent meaning of the words, whereas keeping the words intact. Both of these are from tahrif which means to distort. And the group that the ayah is talking about are from the leaders of the Yahud, people like Ka'ab ibn al-Ashraf and Huyay ibn Akhdab and Malik ibn al-Sayf, these types of leaders who would mislead their followers. لِتَحْسَبُوهُ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ So that you may think that it is from the original scripture from Allah. So that is, you end up thinking that their distortion is the original Torah. But Allah says, وَمَا هُوَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ But it is not from the Kitab. It is not from the original Torah. And they say it is from Allah. But it is not from Allah. And they speak a lie against Allah whilst they know. Meaning this is all on purpose. It is not some kind of human error which we could forgive them for. Or maybe something out of ignorance. Again, we could give them an excuse if it was ignorance. No. They know exactly what they are doing. So there is no excuse for these types of people. So reflecting on this ayah, we find Allah Jalla wa'ala exposes their plots and plans. In this case of changing the book to mislead people. Inevitably, their scripture is going to have things which do not accord with their desires. Such as stoning the adulterer to death. And such as the description of the last prophet. So whatever does not accord with their desires, they will change the meaning or remove the words entirely. And even today, you hear about the Yahud saying that the scripture needs to be interpreted in accordance with modern times. This is the essence of taharif. When you're going to chop and change the scripture to suit the whims and fancies of the current culture. So they are even doing this today in front of your eyes. We also find that the scripture which is in the hands of the Yahud and Nasara today is not to be relied upon because there are too many alterations and distortions. We may also take that anyone from the Muslimin who makes the harif of the Quran, then he has a clear cut resemblance to the Yahud. And there could be many amongst the Muslimin of weak Iman who try to distort the meaning of the Quran so that it may accord with the 21st century values and beliefs. So these types of quote-unquote Muslims are mentally and psychologically defeated. And we have nothing to do with such people. We also find the major sin of lying against Allah Jalla wa'ala. Also, just notice how bold these people are. That they will actually go to the lengths of changing their scriptures. It's like they do not even have any shame that they would take liberties with the scripture of Allah Jalla wa'ala. You would not dare take liberties with somebody else's property. You have an element of shame. You would be too embarrassed to take liberties with other people's property. So if that's the case with other people, then how about the scripture of Allah Jalla wa'ala, which is more valuable than anyone else's property. It's just something to reflect upon. Ayah 79 مَا كَانَ لِبَشَرٍ أَنْ يُؤْتِيَهُ اللَّهُ الْكِتَابَ 
والحكم والنبوة ثم يقول للناس كونوا عبادا لي من دون الله ولكن كونوا ربانيين بما كنتم تعلمون الكتاب وبما كنتم تدرسون So he begins here by saying that it is not correct for a bashar Bashar meaning human being Bashara means a skin because human beings have skins which are exposed they do not have hair or fur covering the whole skin as opposed to other animals so it is not correct for any human whom Allah has given Al-Kitab this means the scripture wal hukma this is the judgment so the scripture contains judgments wal nubuwa prophethood so this is when Allah Jalla wa ala delivers the message of the religion or the sharia to this person the prophet through Jibreel alayhi salam so that this man or the prophet may preach the deen or the sharia or the divine law to the people and judge amongst them using the divine law this is a prophet so he's saying such a person who has been given the kitab and the hukm and the nabuwa could never say to the people kunu ibadalli be worshippers of me the prophet could never say this to the people so in this there is a clear cut refutation against the christians who claim that isa alayhi salam is ordering people to worship him rather isa alayhi salam could never ever do such a thing no prophet could min dunillah besides allah walakin but rather meaning but rather such a man such a prophet would say to the people kunu rabbaniyin be you o people rabbaniyin this is the plural of rabbani and this means the one who leads people and teaches them and there are other suggestions made as to the definition of this word but we will keep it simple it comes from tarbiya which means to nurture because the root letters are riba which means increase so you're increasing people in their knowledge in their understanding and in their cultural upbringing so they are learned and well cultured as opposed to being ignorant and uncouth bima kuntum tu'allimun al-kitab because you are teaching the book wa bima kuntum tadrusun and because you are studying the book meaning the scripture so this is to say because you people are teaching the book to others and because you people are studying the book then this will lead you to becoming a rabbani just one little point here he says thumma yaqula lin nas the verb yaqula has a fatha why is that the case should it not be yaqulu which is the default position well it is possible in some recitations to be read as yaqulu but the reason why it's yaqula in our recitation is because it is ma'tuf it follows the same ruling of the previous verb yu'tiyahu from ata yu'ti means to give and the reason why yu'tiya is mansub bil fatha is because of the harf an which turns the verb into mansub as is well known ayah number 80 continues on wala ya'murukum an tattakhidhu al malaikata wan nabiyyin arbaba ayamurukum bil kufri ba'da idh antum muslimun so he says wala ya'murukum no would he order you notice ya'murukum again mansub bil fatha because it is ma'tuf on the verb which came before it which was thumma yaqula lin nas and yaqula was in turn ma'tuf on the previous verb yu'tiyahu as mentioned before so in this ayah he's saying neither would such a man meaning such a prophet would order you meaning order the people to take the malaika the angels plural of malak we spoke about that before one nabiyin and the prophets that's the plural of nabi nabiyin is a plural anbiya is also a plural he will not order you to take the angels and the prophets as arbaba plural of rabb what is intended here is that he would not order you to take the 
angels nor the prophets as objects of worship. And this is because a true Rabb is that which is worshipped. So these prophets would never tell you to worship angels or prophets. And during those days, many of the polytheists from the Arab would worship angels. The Christians are famous for worshipping Isa alayhi salam, who was from the prophets. So reflecting on these ayat, we find that Allah Jalla wa ala is teaching us the proper beliefs, which is that every prophet is upon Tawheed and his worship is directed to Allah and that is what he preaches. No one else besides Allah is to be worshipped. And this was the teaching of all prophets. We find in Surah Al-Anbiya, Ayah 25, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَاعْبُدُونَ We find in Surah Al-Nahl, Ayah 36, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُوتِ We find in Surah Al-Zukhruf, Ayah 45, وَاسْأَلْ مَنْ أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رُسُلِنَا أَجْعَلْنَا مِنْ دُونِ الرَّحْمَانِ آلِهَةً يُعْبَدُونَ Also in Surah Al-Anbiya, talking about the Malaika, in Ayah number 29 he says, وَمَنْ يَقُلْ مِنْهُمْ إِنِّي إِلَاهٌ مِنْ دُونِهِ فَذَلِكَ نَجَزِيهِ جَهَنَّمْ كَذَلِكَ نَجَزِي الظَّالِمِينَ So there are many many ayat in the Qur'an which teach us that no one made a claim of anything other than Tawheed of Allah Jalla wa Ala. We may also take that because this is a clear-cut refutation against the Christians, it would be a good idea for the Muslim to expose such ayat like these ones, which we have just read, to the Christians. And this could actually be much more effective than debating Christians and trying to score points over them. Just give them this ayah, let them read it and hopefully let the ayat of the Qur'an work their magic on them. Because the ayat of the Qur'an have the ability to open hearts which are sealed. There is something special and blessed about the ayat of Allah, something which we with our own argumentation do not have. So what would happen is that if the Christian reads these types of ayat in the Quran refuting the Christian belief and then he compares it to what he finds in his Bible then it is as Allah Jalla wa ala says the truth stands clear from falsehood. So if you are finding it difficult to get through to a Christian and you're finding it difficult to explain to him what the truth is, you do not actually have to work too hard. Just give him these ayat. Let him read it himself, at his own pace. Now the ayat talk about taking others as an object of worship besides Allah. Let it be known that anyone who rules contrary to Allah Jalla wa ala, and then he wants people to follow him, as opposed to following Allah, then he has, in fact, taken himself as an object of worship. He is essentially telling the people to worship him rather than Allah. And this is what Allah says about the learned ones amongst the Jews and the Christians, that the Jews and the Christians took their rabbis and priests as lords besides Allah. This is not in the way of ritualistic worship, but rather this is in the way of obeying the priests and rabbis in that which is contrary to the word of Allah. So when we talk about worship, we do not necessarily mean some kind of ritualistic acts. Rather, worship is broader. We also pick up the clear lesson that we must aim to become Rabbaniyun, people who lead by example and teach others. So it's not just about teaching them the knowledge, but it's about ensuring that people have the correct etiquettes and act in accordance with the knowledge and etiquettes. So they are well-rounded and well-cultured people who actually put their knowledge into physical action. As Aisha radiallahu anha said that the Prophet's character was the Qur'an. So it's not just about reading the Qur'an and memorizing it, 
but it's about acting it out physically in your life. So this is what a Rabbani does and makes others do. Remember, it is all about tarbiyah. We also find, fairly obviously, that angels and prophets are not worthy of worship, and no prophet could ever order people to worship angels and prophets. We also find that this is major kufr, because Allah asks the question, would he order you with kufr after you were muslimin? هذا والله أعلم.